our week five, discussing the normative versus the empirical senses of the word law. And this is our uh, this is what Tuesday group three uh, for myself, Dr. Nancy Miles, MP, main campus. Uh, Arthur, please go ahead and engage the content you see on your slide. Read it and then we'll discuss. Go ahead. Session overview. Think of an example where someone is criticizing on moral grounds the legitimacy or justness of a civil statute, statute or a law. Imagine a situation where there seems to be a conflict between something that is an accepted practice on legal grounds, but it is regarded as unacceptable or on moral grounds. These examples and situation, situations illustrate that there must be there must be more than one sense we attribute to the notion of law. To avoid, to avoid being fooled by expression connotation without indication, this session introduces the critical thinker to be different senses of law. Madam, please, should I continue? Ante, read. That's how projected, okay? So read it. Factual statements are, are expressions that describe the way the world is. What this means is that they give a report of the way the world is as we experience, with, as we experience them with our senses. We call them empirical because they are expressions derived from experience or observations that are verifiable. Value judgments, on the other hand, are expressions that prescribe or evaluate the way the world or things or someone should ought to be. We call them normative because they state, they state standard, standard or norms to prescribe or evaluate an action or behavior or something. The distinction between factual statements and value judgments therefore helps us to understand general claims of two kinds. Normative principles, which indicate how things must be or how they should be, versus empirical generalization, which supposedly report how things are in fact. Rules or, law, rules or laws of logic and critical thinking are normative, in the sense that they capture how we ought to think and not how we actually do think. All right, if you got what has been read, then we are going to engage just a revision because the subst substantive content here you have seen already. And that is how I teach. If you are following me consistently, you will see, like I mentioned from day one, if you do a consistent engagement of the content with me, by the time we get along, you will see that some of the things we touched on, but now they become clearer to you. If you look at the discussion on the third slide, so let me go there quickly. This one. Review. You see that the, my colleague is also calling it a review. Review means you have viewed it before. You are doing another viewing. You are reviewing. Factual statement versus value judgment is topic one, if you recall. Uh, the president is taller than his opponent. We said that is a factual matter, could be factually true or factually false. But there is something about that expression that makes it factual. When we say it is factual, we don't mean it is actually true. We mean that it has objective truth value. The truth or falsity is about the object being discussed. Factual statement describe. You saw this in topic one. That's why it's a review. They describe. Take note of the key words. It's a description, like to decode. The thing is in the object. You open it out there. So you describe the way the world is. Take note. Madame read it very well. And I didn't want to interrupt. So I muted my mic for her to read all the three slides for coherence. You get the thoughts. 
and then I throw a bit more light on it for you to remember what you already know. A description of the way the world is. Compare that to value judgment in the second or third point there. Value judgment is a prescription. Pre means before you scribe, before you write. Prescription or evaluation of how the world should or ought to be. Remember open text shared versus uh, well-defined terms. Okay, remember verbal dispute versus substantive disagreement last week. When one is saying he's, she's not really a Christian, we said that is not a description. It is a prescription. It means that is not what a Christian should mean, should. We saw that if, I, if we were engaged in a, an open textured dispute, a dispute about an open textured term, the suggestion is that we may be in engaged in what a substantive disagreement because the notion may have different point of views or perspectives. So we saw family, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, remind me before we end, I'll just show you all the questions. I think the main lines of the question, there were twin brothers and twin sisters of it to create a bigger pool. But the, the main lines of the questions that were in your assignment one, just for you to see the questions that were asked and how practical they were. And, and for you to, I mean, to, for you to have a teaser of a kind on it. We won't discuss the subjects, uh, the content proper because there won't be time to do that. But it's a straightforward thing. I, I just want you to see. So if I forget, remind me to show you on the screen. Okay, all the questions that were given. Colleagues have them. But back to what we were discussing. Factual statements describe. So before you scribe, before you write, you I say before you write, you, you write based on what you decode from the observation. So if I say it is raining. I am describing the state of affairs in the world as it is. It's a description of what is there. And then when you pass a judgment or you evaluate, you are prescribing what should be there. So if I say she's a beautiful girl, I'm saying that this is what beauty is should mean. How do you know that? Because of the value term I'm using, I'm evaluating. Beauty is not in the object. It is in how you perceive the thing. You want us to engage that? Look at the various versions of beauty that people have in mind. Short hair, long hair, a beautiful phone, a beautiful environment, different conceptions of it. I told my philosophy students, if you go to the art, art galleries, and you see the price tag on certain paintings, you will be shocked. Some scribbled something on a paper or a canvas on the wall there. And the price tag on this is 5,000. You are shocked. Who will buy this? <laughs> but for someone who can see art, that is valuable. It's beautiful. And you can see beautiful. Because that 5,000, if you check what you can use that money for, Charlie, it's not this drawing on a canvas. Beauty, who determines what is beautiful? Is it in the object or it is in the perceiver? It's a whole subject matter of what? Subjectivity and objectivity of values. That's why I'm saying that if it is a value judgment, you are prescribing what you think beauty should be, should, not what it is, because it is not in the object. So we went through those earlier. Now, if you recall those, differences that we had. So that, look on your screen again, factual statement further on senses. It is your seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling. You know, those are the senses we have that help you to what? Unravel the truth or falsity of that statement. So if I say it is raining right now at Legon, remember that example. It's a factual matter. It can be factually true or factually false. If we go and observe and it is truly raining at, uh, at Legon, that is true. If we check and it is not really false, Madame said, like four is not in the resource too. <laughs> that's that's a statement. Fit type is a factual statement. When we verified right now, it is factually false. She saw it herself. I went through lecture one, lecture two. Like I made her go through because I wanted us to find out together. Because what she said is not a value judgment where we can look 
and she will still say that me I don't see it today that way and and then I'll say no I think I see that way. it's not a value matter it was a factual matter how do I know that we just have to observe by our senses look on your screen to verify the truth or falsity of it if I say the temperature of the woman at the hospital there is 100 uh, degrees Celsius and you say ah no it's not 100 I don't think so. How do, we bury, how do we resolve it? It's a factual matter. We go and check. Finito. Okay, if we check, we can tell. Maybe earlier it was 100 degrees Celsius. Perhaps now after some sponging and whatever, it has come to 36 degrees Celsius. We can verify. It's not something to uh, pull hairs over necessarily. Okay, so very verifiability or the, other, the opposite for what we are doing now is what? Normativity. Is what we are doing to help us understand something else in unit five, which is our focus now. We are taking an idea we have in unit one to build on understanding two connotations of the word law, two general ways of describing law or regulation or uniformity. Okay, so you remember if it is a factual statement, then it is describing the way the world is, how, by our senses, okay, through experience, observation, we are able to do a verification of what is supposedly there. That's what we call the empirical. You saw it in topic one. When I, I give you my slides, I distinguish the empirical from the logical, logical truth from empirical. Logical is dealing with definitions, meanings of terms, language. Okay, whereas the, the empirical was dealing with what? Observation-based knowledge. You saw that then. Here, we are doing a factual versus value cum definition. So when you see normativity, what do you see there? There are standards or norms to prescribe or evaluate how things must be done or should be done. Okay, value judgment definition that is the meaning of this and therefore that is how it should be or should not be whereas the empirical is describing a factual statement then madam read the current slide also now you see that you will be building on that level of difficulty from what you know we are introducing you to what the unknown that remember how we define we make meaning to students that's what is happening now so the normative and the empirical is a build up from what you know about what? The value judgment, if you like, versus what? Factual state. So normative is equivalent somewhat to what? Value judgment. Whereas empirical is equivalent somewhat to what? Factual statement. Now, Madame read that and it is still on our screen. There is a distinction that you can make between factual statements and value judgments, which will help us understand two general claims of a certain type. The normative principles, take note, normative principles, rules that are normative, norm, how things should be done, not how things are done. When we say it is the norm, it, we are saying that is how we expect people to behave. That's what is normal. That's why when people go contrary to the norm, we use our eyebrows to look at them. Like if you went wearing a swimsuit, the examples I gave earlier that I told you I referred to, swimsuit at the lecture hall, will be amazed at you or at church. How should the Pope preach when you're sitting there with, with your swimming costume in the front seat? Proper bikini, I mean, how will he preach in church? But if you were an athlete and you were wearing the same kind, something skimpy like that on you, everybody will watch and clap for you when you are doing the 100 meters very well. Because that is the place for it. So it, the Pope and the Holy of Holies and everybody will watch that athletics perhaps, okay? Because of that, maybe their daughter or son of the church is part of those running the 100 meters. And sometimes part of the bottom is showing outside of the thing and it doesn't become offensive because it's the right place. That's why she should, she should wear kabaya and slate to do the 100 meters. No. So you will see that when you go contrary to the norm, what is the norm? The expected way of behaving, how you should behave. Norm is not how things are. Nanka, we don't need laws. <laughs> the norm is how things should be, should. 
So we put laws in place to regulate because people will do what they should do. They will do what they want to do. So most of the times, what is the case is not the norm. What should be the case is what we call the norm. So without a policeman or a traffic light, the people won't stop for others to cross the road. Normative, therefore, describes, uh, excuse me, prescribes how things should be. Look on your screen respectfully if you can, or how things must be done. So I gave several instances when I was helping you understand equivocation on the word law. If you recall that discussion, I told you that there are some examples you will see of different connotations of the word law in unit five. But I'm using that to help you understand how people can switch from one of the meanings of the word law to another. When we discuss ambiguity equivocation, this equivocation we're doing in unit two, but I touched on this and I showed you how you could go and marry somebody's daughter. And you could go and take somebody's daughter. You haven't married her properly. And then she will go and die. God forbid, oh, doing Deliver. You know how people do partnership without doing the official thing. If the custom of that lady says that you should have married her before, the people will expect you, the brother, to come and marry the cops, stay with her, drink her dead body, the water from her dead body, what have you. Those who do with the hood, I can tell you. If that is the custom, that is how they expect you to do things, how things must be done. Yesterday, I was gossiping to my level, <laughs> my group one, and I told them, certain customs will make you do a lot of intricate things, even when the person is dead. That is how they do things. You may not subscribe to it, but well, if you go and get yourself entangled with it, you will be expected to do things that way. Example, like we like to say, if you go to Rome, you do what the Romans do. So if you go and marry in a certain setting, and then you think that you are coming to do, you know, designer burial of somebody, they will not permit it. They have a way of doing this, a custom, normativity, how things should be done, how things must be done. If you are in Accra or the guard, traditional areas, there's a period you'll be told, don't make noise. I'm sure other traditional areas have it, but Accra is cosmopolitan. So sometimes it generates a lot of tensions here and there. There is no need to, if you don't want to go to where you come from, because that period, the people are respecting the, their traditional authorities and, you know, their spiritual entities. They tell you no noise, I like women. No drumming and what's the other one? And noise making. Bear alarming. It means that the, the road is blocked, literally. That is what it means. Signifying something. I'm not a girl. But I have to respect that custom. So sometimes you'll be told after a certain period on that specific, I think it's one of the Thursdays, you can't come home after a certain time. You can't go telling them that Ghana is a statutory, is a freedom of movement. You are going to move around. Who told you? <laughs> move around and see. You come after a certain time, you have issues. No meeting. After all that I've said, see that when we start going through the laws, you can put them into whether they're empirical or normative in nature. If it is normative, you will be required to obey them. I said when uh, Tungpo's mother passed on, there was a total blackout. I mean, in, in, intentionally, uh, intentional blackout, not like light up in the, in the metropolis, if I'm not mistaken. Everyone being black or red, solemn, uh, you can't just be moving around. There was another in another, a traditional area. They even lashed people at the Trotro station, in the bus terminals. But they came there in their white and what have you. And the instruction was clear. Be in so and so attached to respect the traditions of the land. If you don't, we will lash you. <laughs> Some researchers went to get canes and came back. Yeah. You can't do that. There are certain chips. You go before them. You lie prostrate. If you don't, you, you, you will keep dying can be sanctioned. All this showing you that what? This is norm. This is how it should be done. This is how we must do it. Two plus three must be five. You can't have your own version. It's the normative. It's a principle guiding how we should think. Take notes. You see examples I've given? I've given you examples from customs to civil, uh, civil laws. I just gave you another on mathematics, mathematical laws deduction, deductive laws, uh, whatever, 
laws of logic and what have you. These are all normative why they prescribe how things must be done. We'll go through the specific laws there again. Now, the opposite, still on your screen, look, the different category of law, which is what opposed to this normative way of understanding the word law, is what I'm getting to now. That one, only report, take note how things are in fact. That is the presupposition. So the empirical sense of the word law is only what a, a representation of what we believe the world is, not what it must be or should be. Look at the difference. So one is describing the regularities, the uniformities, the, what's the other word, the patterns that we have observed the world to be. So if the meteorologist tells you that it will rain cats and dogs tomorrow, the, the grounds on which you will make that conclusion, you draw that conclusion is in the past, when the Northeast winds come from so-and-so angle of Togo to so-and-so and so, this, this is what happened. And so we see so-and-so winds going so-and-so and so. That is why we are, we are predicting. It's an informed prediction by the sisters in the Lord. We are predicting that tomorrow it will rain. That's science, empirical science for that matter. The political scientist only gathers data based on patterns. So in the past, Ketu South voted so and so way, and uh, Bantama North did so and so and so way. And because of this and that and that, that we have observed that this and this and this. Therefore, MPP will win. Therefore, NDC will win. It's an empirical study. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, it's a prediction can fail. So remember Trump of America and Hillary Clinton and how big, 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 you know, research institutes were embarrassed big time because the, the, the research being done is describing the supposed patterns, regularities. So whenever the clouds gather, it rains. I'm only referencing what an empirical law. The clouds could gather and it will not rain. You can go and force the clouds that you got it, you must rain. You got it, you must rain. You are disobeying the law of nature. No. Whenever we throw a ball up, it will come down. You do not go uh, telling the ball that, why is it that when I threw you up, you have gone beyond space and you are flying? No. Whenever a woman gets pregnant, she delivers in nine months. That's biology. We went from physics, we've gone to some political science. You can go to social. Everyone that grows up in a, a, a broken home becomes a social deviant. This can fail, and it has failed several times because people may be guided differently, even though they came from a broken home. They may be guided differently, and they will come out to and those supposedly who came from not broken homes. If it's not broken, then it's straight. Eh? <laughs> straight. You see how you are all quiet? Because your microphones are disabled, but I know that you are following. Me. Now, if it, the person could come from a straight, unbroken home, whatever that is, sociology, eh? And still end up being a deviant. In fact, that be Jimmy no control, and they, they, they lose focus. My point then is these are all laws that are arising from what? Factual observation of what past regularities. What has happened in the past consistently? Yaya got pregnant, she delivered in nine months. Ajua got pregnant, even none. Abna two years delivered after nine months. Therefore, we come to the hypothetical view of a regularity of a certain law of nature, biology, which says what? Whenever a woman gets pregnant, she delivers in nine months. Understand the presentation I'm giving you. So that you need seven, you will take it fala easy. If you don't get the normative versus the empirical now, when we do unit seven, it discusses uh, uh, inductive reasoning in the sciences and everyday life. You will have a lot of technical issues there. But if you get the distinction here very clearly, then that place you build on it and now you are ready to see why the pseudo uh, scientific statement, falsifiability, confirmability, verifiability, all those will happen there in unit seven inductive reasoning, why we call it a hypothesis, if we have a finding and it is not a certainty. All those ones are built on what? The understanding of what is normative 
a principle and what is empirical a principle? What is a normative law or regularity and what is an empirical law or regularity? The difference. One describes and therefore it is based on how I've seen it in the past consistently. So I predict that tomorrow too will be like yesterday, but tomorrow may not be like yesterday. That is why, look at my screen now, excuse me, Madame hasn't read that, but I think that we can quickly touch on it. That is why, where is it? I want to have, look at my screen now, empirical laws are this. That is why empirical laws, that is what scientific law, or you can call them natural law, nature, these laws are like predictions. They can fail people. The doctor can say, for example, that all the fibroids I have seen for my 37 years or so of practice of this size, when the patient has it, they don't deliver by themselves. They have to be operated upon. Otherwise, they will die. Since my 37 years of practice, you have those fibroids. That is why I think that this pregnancy cannot be delivered by yourself. You have to operate. And it is an informed decision he's making, which must be respected based on what we know so far. But it could fail. This time, the lady could push the baby out easy with the fibroids still hanging there. For us to say, ah, she had another X factor in her system that made her able to push the baby. Then we can now, as scientists, investigate further. So... It is not a certainty that whenever I saw a patient that has X, Y, Z symptoms, the patient died the next 30 minutes. You two have been sitting in my office for 20 minutes. I just checked your report on my file and you already have those symptoms. You have done 20 minutes. So the 10 minutes left is call quickly and book a place at Aldome Estate because you become obituary in 10 minutes time. Certainly, no, not with certainty because this time it could fail. Why? Because the past need not necessarily be like the future. And so empirical laws border on what? A description of regularity. Look on your screen, please. Of regularities, uniformities, patterns of events that have been observed consistently in the past, based on which we make a prognosis, a prediction that tomorrow too will be like that. That's why the meteorologist can fail. That's why the political scientist can fail in his findings. That's why the, uh, the sociologist can fail. Anybody engaged in observation-based studies, that is what we call science, empirical science. Some of you want to call some social studies. That's even worse. To the human science, if you tell a metal to sit on your table whilst you run a research, it will sit down quietly and wait. So there's a certain degree of high probability when you're dealing with natural objects. Ask a human being whether uh, uh, you vote for MPP or NDC. Human being. Say, oh, hey, Nana dear, Nana dear, we are with Nana. <laughs> In her head, he said, I will show you. That is how human beings are. Ask her to sit, let us check something. He, he, you say, yes, I'm sitting. Step out of the lab and come back. Human being will jump, go here, go left, go and spoil your whole research. But a meta, or a tree or gold that you are investigating something on will sit, it is natural. So even within the scientific studies, some of them are, have a higher degree of probability when you come with, out with findings than others. So the social sciences, look at the name social, they are dealing with human, then the human sciences are extremely likely to be what? Less true than even the natural science, but they are all empirical. So we put them together and show you that they don't have certainty associated with them. I think that I have spoken enough and I will now want to uh, enable your microphones generally, take some questions and then allow someone to read over. Maybe I'll let uh, Asha Ryan read over what is on the screen and then I can allow every mic. Try and be as quiet as you've been now with the microphones disabled so that you can hear me very well. Then afterwards, we can have a chat. Asha, go ahead. You can unmute your mic now and read what you see on your screen. Asha, are you there? 
If you are not there, let's take Mabel. Mabel, uh, I just allowed your mic, Mabel. Go ahead. Mabel, please unmute your mic and read. Your hand is up. Perfect. Natural yes. laws, also called scientific laws, refer to the statements that express laws about nature, into bracket, living things, rivers, celestial bodies, etc. They are defined as statements that aim to describe the, regular, the regularities or uniformities in the patterns of events or features of things we observe around us. They are formed based on our past experiences. For instance, we observe that at any point in time, when a fish is taken out of water for a maximum of five minutes, it dies so we conclude that all fish survive in water as a statement that expresses an attribute or a property that applies to all fish anywhere, anytime. Well done. You have read very well. I'll, I'll keep rejecting. Read, eh? Okay. Examples. Every planet moves around the sun in an elliptical orbit. All metals expand when heated. Any physical object that goes up must come down. All green plants use sunlight for photosynthesis. All fish live in water. Every human being breathes oxygen. No NB. Natural law statements have no exceptions and are therefore called law-like. But there is no way to be absolutely certain that such statements will always be true. So they are called law-like because maybe someday counter-evidence counter will make them false. Very good. I forgot that I've muted my microphone. All right. So the two things that Madame read should make them obvious. The, the, something that she clarified to help you understand it is what you see on your screen. Natural laws have no exceptions. They're also laws and are therefore called law-like. But as soon as you hear but, it should tell you something. But you cannot be certain the statement will always be true. So then it means there is a possibility of what exception. Just like a woman can take seed and you are expecting the child to come in nine months so that your trouble will begin with diapers and weighing and what have you. And the child decides that I me, mean, I'm coming seven months. I'm not waiting. That place is too hot. The world is jamming. <laughs> I want to come. It is possible to have a child who says, I'm not waiting for nine months. You are not going to tell that child that you are not coming. When mommy is, I mean, baby is coming out the seventh month, you say you are not allowing the child to come. Why would you keep it? That if he comes, he's breaking the law of biology. So you are going to, the, the, the child be arrested or what? Which law is that? Why? You think it, it is like uh, Sister Adwa and Auntie Abna fighting over Johnny Bravo and, and scratching their faces. Someone throws acid, another one. That, that is another kind of law. That one policeman will come. The state versus Atiadwa for throwing acid. But if a child in a, ba a baby in a tummy decides that I'm not coming in the ninth month, he is also breaking a certain law, but that law will rather go and change. Take note. We will change our thinking about how long it takes for mummies to be pregnant. But if you went to steal someone's laptop or something which is also breaking a certain kind of law take note we will not change the law because oh, you are the president's son or you are a, a, a priest's you know child we will not change the law for you the law will be intact it is you that we will arrest and make you conform take note so for natural laws which are described as empirical laws it can admit of exceptions why because we are not absolutely certain that what we have discovered about the world based on our observation of it 
will necessarily be true all the time. Example, we cannot be absolutely certain that every metal will expand when heated. Because there is always the potential. I'm teaching you to help you in unit seven. So follow. <laughs> because this one day, there's, there's subject matter in unit five is not any headache. The normative versus the empiric, I'm, I'm done. But you have to see how it connects to inductive reasoning, how we reason inductively, which is unit seven. That is what I'm helping you see ahead with my elaboration on the normative versus the empirical. I said, we can't be absolutely certain, look on the example Madame just read, left side example two, that all metals, excuse me, metals will expand when they are heated. That is what we had discovered then had, as we speak, that has been made false already. Because we have metals that will not expand even when you heat them. They are the ones that you use for precious jewelry. You see that they are high quality. They won't expand, my dear brothers and sisters, in the Lord. <laughs> so this supposed regularity, which is empirical in nature, we gathered information, we kept finding metals. Whenever we found them, they expanded. As soon as you touch heat, I mean, they, 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 come, they, they come into contact with heat, they, they expanded. So we knew that it is a matter. All of a sudden, we can discover a matter that will not expand when you heat it. When that happens, a proper scientific study, if it's an empirical study, they jubilate. They, they don't become protective of their doctrines. There are recordings in previous sessions that I've had in this course at the academic channel, those who are on that channel. You can start reading ahead for unit seven later, okay? You can start reading ahead because your final exam will be, I think it's your final exam on the course outline, I'll put it there, will be on unit six, seven, nine, and 10. Your interim assessment will be on unit one all the way to I think unit seven, if I'm not mistaken, you can check, yes. Unit one, two, three. The unit four is not substantive content. So one, two, three, five, six, and seven. And you will see that units one and two are substantively a repetition of portions of unit five. You can check. So it's, they are not new content. That is why I'm telling you that you will need your unit six and seven, both for IA and for final exam. Unit six, I will upload uh, the, the an additional recording there for you and take the other one up. It's difficult to open the one for my colleague. Now take note, I said, so unit seven, some of the issues there is what I'm touching on for you. You cannot be absolutely certain that all metals will expand when heated. Yesterday's own, today's own, and most importantly, the ones we will discover tomorrow. Why? When you say all metals expand when heated, you are speaking for all metals. Yesterday's own, today's own, and those that are yet to be discovered. As for women, it be so then they you are talking about women born, dead, gone, those who are now being born, young girls who go to become women, and those whose great grandmother Kra has not been born yet. Before she will come to be born and she will give birth to children who will become women and grow up. You are talking about all of them potentially. When we do generalizations in unit six and seven, you will see the point. So this is extremely general. It's a law-like generalization, universal generalization in nature. This is what is happening here. So when you make such a general claim, and we ask you, what is your evidence? You see all the metals we've discovered so far are like that. They all expand when heated. Then we say, so what? So you say all metals will therefore expand when heated. The challenge is what? You could encounter, that's what my colleague has put there. You could encounter what a counterfactual, a counter evidence, an evidence that is opposite. Counter means opposite to the fact. You can encounter an evidence of a matter that will not expand when heated. Potentially, and I'm telling you as we speak, that has already happened. You can encounter, example one, look on your screen to the left, a planet that will not move around the, the, uh, the sun in an elliptical orbit. Yes. Now you can encounter a, a bird that will not fly. That has already been discovered. 
you can encounter a swan that is not white, et cetera, et cetera. Why are these potentially possible? Because you are only discovering what is already put there. Science is only, I'm talking empirical science now, not deductive science. Deductive science is the mathematics and logic and they are empty of content. They're just a study of the patterns of thought and what have you, okay? But when we talk empirical science, where you are studying based on what you have observed, we say you have only discovered patterns that are there. The thing was covered and you have opened it, have discovered it. When you go and open a game, you may discover something else and keep discovering and discovering and discovering ad infinitum, that's science. So science thrives on what? Research, you search and you go back to search again and search again and search again. So you thought sickle cell anemic patients die at 18 years. That's a general statement. Scientifically verified then, not proven, it is not a proof. This is unit six, seven I'm doing in the idea as I help you understand this one. You haven't proven, look at the word, the word is proof. You can't say you've proven. If it is a proof, it can't be otherwise. Again, it can't change. What a proof, that's what it means. It is only what a confirmation based on the several evidences you have of anemic patients, sickle cell patients that perhaps died then. But you will see that as we keep searching and searching and searching, we will discover another law, another finding that may nullify what we thought we knew as empirical scientists. And that has happened. So we have sickle cell anemic patients that have thrived and grown, built a family. They still have their complications here and there, but they are being managed. And they are living beyond the 18 years that were supposedly the finding there. So if someone has an empirical law, which is a natural law, you have to take note that it may be falsified when there is a counter evidence. And if you got that, later on, you will see why the more generic or general the law is, the easier it is to falsify. And how it is that that one rather is what a, a joy for the natural scientist when his or her theories are falsified. Excellent. Amy? questions. Maybe we should read this one. I want us to start. Uh -huh. So let's read the last part. All that I've said uh, on these slides, let us read them over. And then when we start doing the other normative laws, they will work. So far, I'm emphasizing uh, on the natural laws, which are empirical in nature. So let me have Clenam Joachim read the current slide. Okay. Clenam, you'll be able to unmute now. Go ahead. Natural laws are disguised predictions. They predict about future realities. The statement all metals expand when heated means that if you come across any metallic object and you heat it, then you expect it to expand. But what if you discover a new metal and it does not expand upon heating? Then it will make the statement all metals expand when heated to be false. Scientific laws always depend upon evidence and they are predictions they may turn out to be false. So we call them law-like statements or hypothesis. Law-like statements or hypothesis. And B, since they describe regularities and uniformities in the patterns of events around us, they are empirical. Very good. Thank you. This sense of natural law in specific this sense of natural law in terms of scientific law makes natural law an empirical concept. Natural law as a normative concept is about rules for how manca humankind. Madam, please, no. I to say. No, it's fine. I just didn't want to bother you there. So the second half may create confusion in your mind. So I just wrote it on because you understand the sense in which we use what empirical laws as what, uh, what was the expression as empirical. I don't want us to look at scientific, the normativity of scientific laws, because then it starts confusing us. We will be looking then at the, the rules aspect of scientific laws. The textbook focused on empirical laws as what a description of regularities. And so I want you to keep that one out to avoid confusion. But that's the point that I wanted you to make earlier is what Madam has read for us. Look at this, this very important point here. 
they are disguised predictions. They are actually predictions. When I say all oh, women deliver in nine months, I'm predicting. That's why it can fail. What is the assurance that gives you? It tells you that don't, don't be overly, like don't take scientific predictions or scientific claims or hypotheses. You understand all those terms later, hypothetical. Don't take them to be certainties. They are not certainties. Respect them, be guided by them. But I tell you, they fail. Look at COVID-19, how many jobs people have taken in the name of? <laughs> so if you take this one, then it means this because of the this, this, that, you go and take it three days and they say you have to go for reinforcement. They say mos mosquitoes are biting, so you have to do this chloroquine. Before long, they say chloroquine is not good. Then they bring a test on it and they have to they say, no, that one too, the mosquitoes have discovered the problem. Already been put there. They are not creating it. Science doesn't create. Science is only uncovering what an ultimate creator somewhere has put. So I told a uh, Monday group yesterday, my group one, I think, uh, you are group three. I told them, I gave them some examples. Look at the aeroplane, how heavy it is. It can carry a, hundreds of people, as you see, right? But it lifts itself up and the force of gravity cannot pull it down. You see, by you, one tiny you, when you jump, force of gravity will bring you down. If we discover the laws, we are able to discover others that counter other ones. Look at fish, or let's use your pen. Before the swimming pool, drop your little tiny big pen. It will sink. Yet a boatload of people, <laughs> cars, let me talk even ship, a shipload, if you watch Titanic, a shipload of people, people with cars, eh? hundreds and hundreds of people in that ship who sail on the sea and it's not sinking. Where did the law of flotation go to? That things float? How, why is that? People are not sinking, the whole boat is not sinking. So it means that we discover some of the laws and then as we continue searching, we discover another that counters the other one and discover another that counters. You go and stand on a building. God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. People who say that they are stressed in life, so they are going to commit suicide. You go and start at the edge of the uh, high rise building and drop themselves, and they fall like a tap, boom, on the front, they are gone. Yet a bed, Let, let's use something more, because human beings are heavier than a bed. Yet, uh -huh, the aeroplane thing I give. Heavy aeroplane takes off, and it is not falling, it's floating there. Another law, you see, is countering another law. So, all that science. Empirical study is doing is discovering patterns that are there, factual. They are describing the world as it says, supposedly. Supposedly, because some fail. We thought we have discovered a pattern. Then the next time we find another pattern or another regularity, you say, Asumua, Asumua, they can be premature, preterm baby. Or Asumua, human beings can have feathers. It is not impossible, potentially. For us to discover one day human beings that can fly physically, I'm not talking <laughs> witchcraft fly. One day, maybe God created some. We just haven't uncovered it yet. That is why science, empirical science at that, thrives on what? Research people. Why is it important for a critical mind to know this? Especially in the sciences and studies that are discovering patterns. So you don't go making it look like Agbena. As for these elections, they have won it hands down. It's a joke. You are dealing with human beings. It's an empirical study, first and foremost, of a certain type. Not even metals who will sit and give you true representation of what they feel. If it's hot, it's hot. Human being, you are slapping so hard, you are slap me again. That's the brother. The same brother that when his, his friend guy stepped on his toe, small one, he nearly slapped the guy to death. When Ajua gave him a slap, he said, Ajua, give me another slap. Human being, you can't understand us. You have seen the woman you get her in the morning. Oh, grandma, good morning. Send me the film. So that means me get get off. Let me be. You greeted her. The day you didn't greet. So you are passing, you greet me. You don't know what to do. Human being. You are studying human being. You go and discover patterns and you want to come and represent it as a certainty. When you go for your research, your field work, if your project in the bank, you are going to investigate an area, so you set up a bank, you are going to do feasibility studies. Remember, you did critical thinking. 
it told you that empirical studies are not done like didactic studies. Don't have that approach. Otherwise, all your projections will fail and you may be doing haircut or, <laughs> or IMF and be bothering our pensioners and what have you. It is important to understand that when you deal with empirical study from the natural ones to the human ones to the social ones, you are dealing with what? Empirical regularities. So whenever we did a crusade in this area, we got a lot of these people coming to give themselves to whatever, you know, I mean, to give themselves to Christ or whatever you profess. I do Christ, so I'll profess that. So then you say tomorrow too, we are going to do that. You don't know the nature of the demons that came this time. Sometimes you have to go quietly, no jumping around. You do groundwork. Sometimes you have to announce it. You have to do that feasibility studies, spiritually or physically, before you move. Not that one-way pattern. Because it's, if it is empirical, it can fail. It can fail, people. It can. And if you got that, then we are good to move on and now engage the other category, broad category of laws or regularities that we call normative. I've already given the introduction. Now we are going to see a lot of instances of normative. What then should you take note? If it is an empirical law, it can fail because it is a prediction. That means if there is an evidence that is counter opposite to what you thought the law was, the regularity was, you change the law to accommodate the evidence, the new evidence. But we are dealing with what? Observation-based regularities. You will revise the law in your anomaly and to change it and say that not all metals expand when heated. As not all pregnancies, are uh, 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 due in nine months. Not knowing it is not all, you know, whatever. When you go to space, for example, and you go and raise your leg too high, you may, throw, you may be thrown out of balance because force of gravity, as it doesn't work here and stuff like that. Asumwa just may not know him. I, I like to say it in Ga. Sana, onyedama, you know, asumwa, asumwa. I say that people laugh at me with it. Not knowing it wasn't true that. Just because I had sickle cell, it means that by seven, 17 and a half years, I should be writing my will. Who told you that? So far as you're doing your follicles, you're taking your greens, you're eating healthy, you're doing your warm water, what have you, you should live normal. Of course, cautious that you have some complications here and there. And so you don't want to be extremely all over the place, wasting your, your breath and stuff like that. That's all. No, that is a death sentence. Says who? You cry, you don't get malaria infection because of the nature of your cells. So more studies, some even go and wash out all that is some have leukemia, cancer, what have you. It is research and research. Why are we searching? So we can discover other patterns that perhaps we don't know. And I think that was a good job. Well done. Now we, I can allow all mics and take questions if there are any. Raise your hand, please, if you have a question. I'm glad to help you. All microphones have been allowed. I'm taking questions. Jemima, your hand is up. I suspect it was to read. And then, Mr. Ahiatroga, if you have a question, Jemima, I can unmute and ask. Mr. Ahiatroga, you can do the same. Let me take all the questions that you may have. I see Jemima's hand up. Jemima, is there a question? Hello. Please. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Ahiatroga. Madam, okay. please, I can't see my screen. Mr. Mr. Hiatroga, this is a question you have. I'm not calling Ebenezer Amu. I've called Mr. Hiatroga. Let us let him speak. Unless he's not there, then I can take another. No, please. I wanted to read initially. Please. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Then I can now take particularly mine. Okay. go ahead. But he are muted though, so you may want to unmute first. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning, my lady. Yes, please. Please, yes. I'm taking this as my main reason. So the poster was open just yesterday. So oh, I'm my lady, you don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I want don't don't announce announce your personal matters on earlier that okay. 
I'm asking questions I'm, on the subject matter. You can send me an email on personal issues so that you have your privacy. This is being recorded. I'll put it on YouTube. Hey, man. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. So you can send such queries directly to me so that you don't share your information for everyone to hear. Right now, one question on your content okay. proper. Okay. Yes. Content yes. proper, lady. Let's do it that way to help you. Okay. Even as I'm more, please ask your question. Madam, please, there's Madam, no question. Just that I can't see my questions is projected. I can't see them. You can't see what? What, what can't you see? Please? Can't you see? please, I can't see what you projected. The question. Wait, which questions? I'm only seeing the, which questions, which the questions have been hold on, hold on. Which questions have been projected? You had your colleagues the slide, reading. Please. You had your the slide. The slide. Yes, please. Look, Look. But someone was reading, so obviously it, it, it was there. You, you understand? If it's not there, I don't know where the person will be reading from. I want to reshare the same thing so that maybe it can help you. If you keep your screen inactive for a while. That is what happens. And I think this is a fifth week we have gone through that. You see that if you keep your screen inactive for a while, just like your phone, just like this one. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? No, please, ma'am. No, please, ma oh, please, no. class, please. can you see class. my screen? If you can say yes, you can yes. unmute and say yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Hello. Yes, we can see it. Please. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, Let's get muted, okay? Because people can see, if you can see, then I'm, 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 Take your network you and then go out, out and come in again. I just stop sharing and reshare. So you should see it. Okay. I can't see. Hey, Auntie. I am projecting something, and there are 376 of you currently. Two people say they can't see. I won't be able to make you see <laughs> because I just can't see. So I'm showing you what you can do. And you will see. If you mute your view, you won't see it as, as a video. So go out and come back in again. Don't let us put such things on the recording because this is University of Ghana. I got a, a lawyer from somewhere, she asked what the person claims in Nigeria, who, who found these online resources very useful and sent, just sent a message to commend us and to say that she's really been a, enlightened by the content she's reading there. Of course, she won't get a degree from us, but she gets to engage the content. She's very impressed and happy. She's studying law, a PhD student. She just got the introductory to critical thinking thing that was put there. And he said, wow, I will need this. And, and then she commended us. They listened to us. Then you are talking about, I can't see, I don't know how to do online thing. You said, yeah, fine. You embarrass you. That's what I'm saying. You have, if you have a concern, you have to ask. But I have tried to address it. I said, get out of the, when I say get out, how do, you, how do I express it in a way that I can just log out and log in again? Because I have reached it. And the generality of the class can see. So it is something you are not doing right. Either your network or you kept your gadget, you know, inactive for a while. And we've done that since we started teaching, okay? And people, so do it that way. I will try and reach it. Ghana, Ghana Elizabeth. Is there a reason why your microphone is unmuted? I'm trying not to disable. This is for a long two floors down. When I started engaging, all microphones were disabled. I just kept talking and talking and talking and talking. I don't want it that way. But when I allow it, then people can't mute their microphones. And I can make them out. Mute it so that we don't have the feedback. Then I can take your queries. All right. I want to stop sharing and reshare again. Maybe it can help those whose network is. They have, I suspect it's either network or their gadget is sleeping. Then they can see. I have stopped sharing and I have reshared again, and I suspect that now it should be better. Okay, now I take your questions. I see it do somewhere. Ask your question quickly, sir. 
You can unmute. Yes. Okay. Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is I Dr. Martin. Good morning, Dr. Kakrawai. Now, madam, no does. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Go ahead. I wanted to ask, um, are prophecies empirical? It depends on how it's presented. Sometimes they are pseudo scientific. What we do in the seven, you understand. But if they present it as a verifiable statement, then it will be scientific. So it will oh, be verifiable. Okay. If I say, for example, we'll get to Unit 7. I, I've, I've touched on that in some of my recordings. So maybe you heard it today or you, it just came to mind. If I said on 31st of December 2022, for example, like we see in Ghana sometimes, that our next president, or in January 2023, uh, on the 15th of January 2023, Ghana will experience uh, an eclipse of the sun. This is supposedly a revelation I think I've had, or I believe I've had, which you can't contest. People should be minded. You may not believe it. It doesn't mean it's not there. <laughs> so okay. that's another discussion, okay? Now, if I say the okay. way I've said it, if I say the way I did say it, it is verifiable. It's a scientific oh, okay. statement. Why? Because we can test it. Let me say 15 January. We are all here. Like some people said that uh, Trump will win. The, the, the Trump of America, right, will win the, the recent elections they had. It's just a matter of verification. But the time will come. Ah. So we will wait. Just like if I told you it's raining at Nungwa in this physical world, and you are not at Nungwa, you say, ah, you can verify. So this one too is just a matter of wait and see. It's an empirical matter. <laughs> if 15 January comes, uh -huh. then you see people will be trying to justify and say that if say we are new winner, if it doesn't become this and this, then this that one is a fallacy. You see it. Some of them are fallacious because of how the person presented it. It will necessarily be true, not what happens. When I took you to the introduction, you will say when I I'm now elaborating. So I know you are answered. I'm just adding something that would be useful to the class. When when I took you through a logical truth and empirical truth and some examples for you to pause and think about in the beginning of the lecture, slide number one, lecture one, you saw that I put certain statements that I call necessary truths. If I say tomorrow it will rain or it will not rain, that is already true. So sometimes the prophecies are presented as pseudo-scientific statements. They are pretending to be scientific, but because of how the person spoke, it will necessarily be true no matter what happens. If you go and then it, it actually happened, you say, you see, I told you. If you go and it doesn't happen, you say, I told you that if this happens and this happens, then this. That's one and that's one didn't happen. That's why this is. So whatever happens in future makes it true. That's pseudo-scientific. It is already true. It's a necessary truth. We call them tautologos and therefore not falsifiable. If it's not falsifiable, then it is empty of content. We will do that in unit seven to help your critical mind. But sometimes it is a scientific thing. The person tells you this elections, like we hear, because you talk prophecies, I want to use those that we are familiar with. So and so person will win, will win by so and so margin. Some people are so detailed about it. And it happens, as they said. So then it has been scientifically tested and what? Verified. But some too, how they said it, it's not scientific, it's a pseudoscience, it's a dogma. It will always be true regardless. We don't want scientific statements to have that protection where no matter what happens, it's true. If it's scientific, it must be falsifiable. It must be able to be false. Okay. I hope I hope okay. you some already answered. Yeah, I'm Thank okay. You. Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. Yo, thank you to say. Just to add, it's not only in, uh, my friends, it's not only in uh, you, but uh, prophets, even those who do betting or sports. Sometimes they say, oh, if Messi plays this and that and that and that and that, then this, oh, wow. They say, I say, oh, Basa win, oh, Basa win. They <laughs> just tell us Basa will win. So that when we go and Basa loses, we know you have lied. If we go and Basa wins, we'll come and give you fans. But some people do so, oh, I didn't say, you know, if this one and don't come and give us any conditions around it, that makes it necessarily true no matter what happens. All right, thank you very much, Samuel. Very good. Folks, go get those re recordings ahead. After you've done your unit six, I'll put, I'll upload that one too for the whole site. Just like we are using Dr. Casey's slides now. I, use, I think the previous weeks I've used mine and sometimes Dr. Dr. Morgan's one. I try to pick from colleagues. I, I look at the content proper and see how it has been spread out, if it will be useful for 
everyone, I put them there. I'm going to put my unit six there. We engage them quickly. Those ones are didactic, unit six. Eh? Modus ponens, modus tollens. We use two ways to do it. If you sit down and wait for the content to come to you, you won't understand. It's not a case. It's deduction, rule bound. This is how it must be done. Should be done. Two plus three equals five. If you don't understand plus, no one can help you. You have to understand the concept. Okay, that's deduction, unit six. Right after that, we go into a build up of what we are doing in unit five now for unit seven. Then you are ready for your interim assessment to cover 30%. You would have added that to your assignment one that we are going to. Uh, work on quickly. We'll open assignment two. I'm open for the main campus. We have to work out. So there's so much work. Nanka, we have opened the second one yesterday. So we plan to open it sometime in this week. This is the fifth week. That's the contact we have with you. We open the second one. Then you have 20% sitting down out of your 100. Okay. Then you do your interim assessment 30%, add to the 20, will be 50. Your final exam in the at the end of the semester will also be 50 total in 100. People can sit and do any of the assignment, do interim assessment, then they come and do an exam. If you do the exam, God helps you to even get 45 over 50. It's not a case, but it is highly unlikely. But it, suppose you do some magic to get 45, it is a reset. So those who don't take assignments, they won't do interim assessment. Excuses all over the place, brothers and sisters in the Lord such a person will already be setting themselves up for reset. Don't come bothering anyone if you do that. Do the assignment. They come with instructions, clear, unambiguous instructions. If it's as assignment two, we'll tell you go to assignment two. If it is as test and quizzes, we'll tell you go there. Just in case you open the forum, we'll tell you go there. Why won't you read announcement? Now I've drifted, eh? Go there, do what it says. You have two attempts. Use the first one to copy the question and go and work somewhere. Because I don't want you to come and tell me that your network did A or B or C. If you are writing an exam and your pen stop, stops writing, is that the lecturer's issue? But we know and anticipate that that could arise. So something that should just take 10 minutes to copy. We gave you one hour to just copy a question and get off. That one will submit empty. But you still have the After, and you are, I have my word count. I have checked everything very well. I'm, I'm okay with what I have. I've edited what I, what if I want to do with it? You've done that. And I want to paste. Copy, come and use the second attempt to paste. This is clearly written there. Then people will tell you, Doc, I didn't know we had two attempts. If you don't know that one, how can that be? Doc, I didn't read the instruction at the exam hall when you gave me the question. You are telling the lecture that. So we should clap for you and jump. So annoying, <laughs> people don't realize. So if you could just open it quickly, even for five minutes, the tone of the writing, you could be a man five minutes, because you gave birth to me. <laughs> you don't realize that we are dealing with thousands of students, eh? then people are putting them in my email. I end open my email, 600 messages, people's assignments. Some after they put it on Sakai, then they put your email that this backup. Who is going to pull that out? How do we check for plagiarism? Do you realize that? How do you restrict the due date? If it goes beyond the due date, the assignment will disappear on the site. You are putting it in email. How do we stop you from putting it there? It's an assessment. If you come three years later and we want to compute your marks, whose email are we going to check to pull whose assignment? Put it on Sakai. That is your lecture room. That has all your record. People won't listen. And they are just losing 10 marks like that. So warn your friends or caution your friends. If you're on a certain site or a certain, maybe another course, tell them, hey, you people, the assignment, have you done your own? Why are you waiting till 10 minutes to the time when you have been given a whole week? Do you know why we give a whole week for an assess assessment that is 20 minutes or 30 minutes? So that you don't have all these excuses. But you, if you like it, after all this elaboration I've given, you will see what people will say, still say. And don't, please, I didn't see that it has been open. My friend told me that. Why is your friend the one telling you? It's your friend, the one examining you. Some platform be, and they said that the question changed. I told two people that send that to tutors. I told them, let them write to me directly and tell me what they are saying. If they are the ones who said the questions. How did you go and then the question had changed for critical thinking? Who, who, who said that? <laughs> anyway, so that is just a free advice and commercial break. Let me take Kese Samuel, if you have a question. Go ahead, sir.
okay, Kese. I don't know if it's Kese or Kese. Kese Samuel. It is a Kese. Kese has his question now. Go ahead, Kese. Yes, please. My question is, um, like the example you gave, the yes, doctor. Yes. Is it a fibroid yeah. one? It shouldn't be. Yes. So, why is it that it shouldn't be called a normative? Update? Because since a uh, within uh, or Oh, I can't hear some of what you are saying, so but I think I get your question. The doctor is only giving you uh, uh, their feedback based on their observation over the period. He has observed that okay. all fibroids as big as the one that you have, or all patients that he has encountered since his 37 years or so of practice, who came with this kind of condition, X, Y, or Z, died the next 30 minutes when it was discovered. That is the record he has. Maybe he can show you about 40, uh, 400 people like that. That's a, that's a big figure for his practice. So he can tell you, you too, when you came, you have the same thing. So yesterday too, must be like tomorrow. Now, if he tells you that, it is not a certainty that that is what will happen with you too. I, I like, I have some funny examples I use. I mean, some ladies just can't get into a relationship or they can't trust the new guy because they've been perhaps in three relationships. Johnny Bravo was dusted, was guy. You know, when we say he's guy, he knows what's up. He has cash, that's dusted, and he has vibes. Three, these three, but he's also a bitter. I eat the powers, very strong. We'll slap you right now and scatter your face. So vibes, cash, swag, but what? A bitter. Second person that this was Johnny Brad, when you got Atalu Tutu, Atalu Tutu, the same. Vibes, dusted, cash, but a bitter. Then the most recent one is Eja Bintu. <laughs> the same three. Now, if today, uh, who is speaking now? Is Kese. Uh -huh. If Kese too comes, Kese has the vibes, he has the looks, he has the cash. He hasn't started beating her. That one, she hasn't seen it with him. But because of the past record, as soon as he sees the guy get vibes, get a cash, and then he realizes that he get a swag, you see that sister starts becoming worried. Oh, what is this? It means she's already expecting that this one to be, but this one may not be a bitter. Maybe the final factor, this is what I did is analogy. You see this in unit eight and nine, reasoning from analogy is inductive. It's not a certainty because this might be the exception to the rule. Having all the three and yet very God fearing, caring, anarchismwa, you know, spiritus understands you, allows you to feel free and all that and, and takes care of you properly. So he might be, have all the three in common with the others and yet he is different. Whenever we reason inductively, now I've gone ahead of myself. It means that the conclusion we are drawing may not, may, may not necessarily follow from the given premises, even if that is what the case has been. All this why, why? It happens if perhaps you are dealing with what? An empirical generalization. The general conclusion you are drawing is based on what particular instances you have observed factually over the period. So the doctor's prescription, when I say prescription, when he picks a judgment of the matter and what he said, look at what I'm saying, is that since I started practicing, this is what I've observed whenever a patient has X, Y, Z symptoms, they die so and so. Therefore, I've just realized that you too have X, Y, Z symptoms, so we are going to die the next day. This one is a, a, a claim he's making based on what an empirical generalization. It's not a certainty. It's a confirmation. And when you do look at your unit six, you see that confirmation is not proof. When we confirm something, we haven't proven it. You have increased the degree of likelihood. It doesn't mean we have proven it. If you prove it, it can be otherwise. But a confirmation can be otherwise. It can fail. 
That's all that we have been saying. I hope that Kese is better. Let's take a do say. Yes, please. Yes, please. You are welcome. Let's take a do say now. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, sir. Uh, please, I, I want to know the difference between the logical law and the empirical law. Oh, we did that in topic one. So we play that back. Play that recording. I have I put it in your resource too, accessible to all students, not just our group. When you are doing logical law, you are engaging the language. So you are looking at uh, consistency. You are looking at and you are analyzing the very statement to tell whether it is true or false. You don't need observation. If I told you a bachelor has beaten his wife, that is necessarily false already. Don't tell me that. Come and see the evidence I have. Look at the girl's cheek, pictures, videos, how they were beating you. What you are saying is already false. I don't care what the evidence you bring. Why? Because of the language. You say he's a bachelor. He cannot beat his wife. We went through that. Uh -huh. You see the sister sitting at the back there at the church auditorium. There. This is the protocol of his attending the pastor in charge. And she's so distressed. What have the sisters done? They are, they are totally naked. Which sisters? The ones wearing the suit over there. Ah, how can they be wearing suit and be totally naked? I gave you all those examples. That can't be true. It's already false before you said it. You don't mean that. So say what you mean. Say they have exposed their back. Oh, I can see their beach and I'm really distressed. I don't know how to approach them. That's fine. But don't say, That's that means they are totally naked. It's so bad. Which people? The ladies. Which ladies? Those wearing suit at the back. That is already false by the logic of it, by the language of it. Okay. So you use definitions, meanings, logical structure. You can't say I wasn't there. However, when I was there, I didn't catch it. The, law, the structure of it is problematic. If you weren't there, you weren't there. But you say you weren't there. The thing is, when I was there, I, mean, I didn't touch your laptop. That is false. So you are able to tell the falsity of it or the truth of it by the language of it. That's why we call it a logical truth. The truth or falsity depends on the logic, the language of it. Okay. However, if it's empirical, you have to observe to ascertain truth. What we are doing here is not, it's not focusing much on the language of it. We are looking at values. So prescriptions, this is what? Empirical. Very good. It is so you can play the the topic one more, or look at past recordings that I have on the academic channel there, and just use the ones that are helpful to you. Very good. Let's take Bismarck also down there. Excuse me. Bismarck, go ahead quickly, quickly. Let's mop up and finish. You people, I have to share your thing to everyone. I'll add it to the resource too. Yes. I think he just asked my question. Yes, I wanted to know the different uh, difference or relationship between factual statement, logical truth, and empirical laws. I think they are clear now, right? Factual statements are what ground empirical laws. Empirical laws are factual generalizations. So after you observe several of them objectively, you know, with your senses, then you draw a regularity that whenever the clouds gather at the northeastern part of this hill, it rains. Our, grandfa our grandfathers and grandmothers were very scientific in that sense of it. Grandma doesn't have to go to love to know that the sister is pregnant. That house girl working in the house there. I said the boss of the house, mama, mama, this, don't see anything. Grandma sitting there, she doesn't even walk. Maybe she's in a wheelchair every morning, they take her outside to dry her little and then bring her. She can be sitting in her chair and then call the house girl, Obra, you know, <laughs> come here. And she will start beating her in the chair. Even though she's she's real, she will say, who impregnated you? How many months? And the madam of the house may not know. Very scientific. People think science means you have to necessarily go into the lab. It's observation based. She can look at the girl's eyes, her demeanor, how she's vomiting, her palms, and slap her and ask her how many months. When madam, who may be a doctor, may you know, perhaps have noticed. Scientific then means observation based. And that comes from what? Factual patterns. You've seen it constantly. Then you draw a generalization. If the person is pregnant, she'll have these symptoms. The same thing, the grandpa on the field can tell the children uh, or the uh, you know, uh, farm hands he went with that. We have to go home now. And the sun is shiny, pie. he says, no, no, it will rain. And everybody's looking at him. He said, if we don't hurry up, we won't get home before this rain. We have contemporary and things, it will be spoiled. Let's move. It's going to rain. The sun is shining. Pa. 
But you tell, look at where the clouds are gathered. Look. Far away there, that thing there, it will rain. How did he arrive at witchcraft? No, observation. Meanwhile, another day to the clouds gather heavily. And he says, we will continue a little. We say, it will rain. We say, no, no. This, we say, we enter. This rain, it won't fall. You see, on top. And it won't rain, so Swampara. And he didn't use humidity and whatever the stethoscope of the uh, <laughs> he didn't use any of them. It's observation based that generates what the empirical generalization. The law that if it is it's gathered at the northeastern part of the hill, it will rain. How did he know? By observation, how did he know that That's if it. I apply this herb here, this particular herb on so and so, the woman will deliver in the next three minutes? He observed the the uh, the pregnant goat going to the bush when it is in labor and going through a certain grass. The other goat would do the same thing. Walk and when they come, the thing that the baby that couldn't come was almost stuck in the goat. Who just fall down out of the woman, the, the, the mother goat, crop. Just like that. And then they will take note of it. And then he'll keep that herb and will keep it. Sometimes they will bring it from the bush to the place and make it. Shroud it in some secrecy so that people don't destroy it and think it's bush. So see, this one, if you touch it, it will be so and so and so and keep it close by. For such purposes, it's observation based. So the laws that are generated, the regularities, patterns, uniformities seen is what becomes the law, unlike the logical one that I've explained, which is linguistic in nature. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's let's take Emmanuel Aluti. Quickly, quickly, Emmanuel, please go ahead. Your hands are up, so be by your gadget chair so that we save some good time. I don't want to brush your questions as Emmanuel is not ready. Albert. Nana Kojo. Phyllis Aja. Madam. Go ahead, Phyllis. Please. Please, I want to ask, like, for example, if uh, a doctor enters into a room like Dr. Dr. Lawrence walks into the hospital. Is it an empirical? But we are talking about regular regularities or laws. Whenever this, then that. Anytime this, then that. Uh, everyone that has done this has done that. Generalizations. That's what we are dealing with. So whenever you throw a ball up, it will come down. Whenever you get symptoms A, B, and C, this will happen. Whoever has done so and so and so will do so and so. So we are talking about generalizations. And then those are the ones we are describing as either normative in nature or empirical in nature. So if I have a generalization that we arrive at as a result of observed instances, that whenever women get pregnant, they deliver in nine months, I'll call this an empirical generalization. But if I say, whenever I have two and I add three to it, it must become five. I'm talking a normative generalization. It's a mathematical law. It's not something we, we observe to see. It is what we add, how we, we use mathematical concepts. If I have two and I add three, it must be five. That is how we think of mathematical laws, normatively. Okay, so I'm talking about regularities. So the statements we are dealing with are, are supposed to be general. We are talking about everything what affects all the members whenever this whenever the class gather here it rains anytime you throw a ball up it will come down any child who outgrows in a working home becomes a social deviant they're talking such expressions that's where you can put one and the either normative or empirical okay no particular statement okay all right oh, okay then the last person that i'm yet to mention queen leo say queen Lee, go ahead thank you phyllis Sorry. Queen Lee, please ask your question. If you have it. Right. Then we can do the last lap, which is just to walk you through just some examples. Those some of you may want to do law. So uh, we we try to give you some if you like a somewhat a taste of the pudding before it is cooked. Hello, Doctor. Yes. I'm not going to ask you to speak now. I called you earlier, sir. You were not there. So when we finish and there is a little time, then I can allow 
you to ask your questions, okay? Nanakujo, I've seen that you want to talk. I kept muting you because I called you earlier. All right, so on the screen now, I want to, let me stop sharing and reshare so that those who may have kept their gadgets uh, inactive for a while can still see alongside. When we bring the recording, which we try to do all the time for these groups, you will see that it was there all the time. Those who are saying it's not there, I can't see it, it's disappeared. Why is it that? No, it's there. So it's not a, a big deal. Yeah. We did all of the natural laws, you see, and then here we are going to do the other set of laws in your unit. You will see civil laws, which I also call statutory on my screen now. You will see mathematical laws. You will see divine laws. You will see um, moral codes, etc., etc. All of those laws, brothers and sisters in the Lord, are described as normative. Why? Because they are showing you how things ought to be done. They are prescribing, whether it is civil law, moral law, statutory law, criminal code, et cetera, et cetera. They are prescriptive. So they are judging, evaluating how things ought to be done. Ought, that is how it must be done. It should be done. They are not describing how it is. It's not a description. It's a prescription, like we have said earlier. So we'll have that as basic. And then let's show you that the only difference between them is how we enforce it. If it's mathematics, I'll give you wrong in the example, in that mathematics uh, equation that I gave you, then you go and correct it and come. If you went to steal someone's then like I said it, it's, a, it's against the civil law. The, sometimes we'll fine you, sometimes we will, we will jail you, depending on the gravity of the matter. But you will be asked to conform to the law. The law will not change for you. It will not say because you added it in now two plus three has become 70. No. Remember, well-defined and open text chapter. I've told you they are interrelated. Connect the knowledge. You will see the point. You can't have your own addition. They are closed concepts we are dealing with, okay, when we deal with mathematics, for example. Civil code, civil laws, you, the civilian, look on our screen now. We force you to conform. Do you know what people want to do? You try exam and make the exam available before the start and see how students will behave. So there are rules and regulations guiding how exam is conducted. You go there 30 minutes before that. You can't go with your phone. You can't do that for a reason, OK? So civil law for you. And you can read them. These are straightforward slides of examples, commercial laws. You can't go taking taxes more than you should or less than. You are not paying yours either. And you are expecting that. What have you? The human rights law, traffic laws. You see traffic light shows ready. See you there. You are driving on because you are who? The law will catch you, and you'll be um, you'll be forced to conform either by fining you, imprisoning you, embarrassing you, making you sweep the street, or what have you. These are all within that. Okay. Look on look on your scandal NB. They are all supposed to be obeyed. An example in your textbook. These are just for you. This is customary law. Correct the customary at the top. That's not a spelling. It's a typo, okay? I showed you instances when I was doing the preliminary session. Custom. So it may not be general for everyone in the nation. But you have to, they are enforced. So you have to respect them. Some people will want to bury someone who is dead. The cue that you, you are supposed to make to carry plenty things, share butter, this what is this the person is dead and gone you have to queue and display what that's the custom some say at this time you're not drumming and i give you several of them customary they are enforceable but perhaps not with the police maybe police will not arrest you but they are normative this is how it should be done see that's it over there okay you can't go for someone's funeral depending on the custom of the people and you are wearing white some places, if you wear black, it is an insult to the person. They expect you to be in red. That is their custom. Others to do white. That's their custom. And, and so on and so forth. Okay. Look on your screen now. What are we emphasizing here? Not critiquing who it is right or wrong. We are showing that they are all normative laws, different ways of thinking of the word law. So you can't go and tell that Allah when we, uh, Ghana people when they are doing their thing that. Ghana freedom of worship. We will worship by making noise and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So allow us to, you will see what will happen to <laughs> Or freedom of movement to let me move. The custom is also recognized within the laws of the land. Okay, 
So those are instances for you. And the, 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 my colleague gives you quite a good number of examples to help you there. Moral law. See, the moral may not necessarily be the legal. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, the legal may not necessarily be the moral. Something may be acceptable in the law, and yet it is not right. So I use that of Hitler example all the time when I'm doing my social and political philosophy. I'm teaching philosophy students in level 300. I like to use those examples. Something could be sanctioned by law, like killing in self-defense. The person wants to kill you. That's raped. Maybe people around you killed some people, robbed you. And now, perhaps, God forbid, even raped you and he's trying to finish you off some psychopath that is sick in his head. Then you lay hands on some wooden something or your high heel under the table then on, into his head, and he's dead. If it is verified, maybe the CCTV cameras, and then, I mean, we check around it as much as humanly possible, and it's established that, look, the guy would have, you know, finished you two off as he did all the people in the house there. That's killing in self-defense. Perhaps the law may let you go, even pacify you and put you to psycho psychological, you know, uh, therapy or something. You have killed, but perhaps, I said perhaps, because I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a judge sitting on the matter, but if it's established, you may be that has to go, manslaughter, not premeditated. You did it in self-defense. If your freedom is taken, you are like an animal. So you can't be held liable for something that you couldn't freely choose. The guy is on you, he has finished raping, he wants to kill you, he has killed people around you, they're all lying, they can see. The guy is crazy. And you just laid hand on something and threw boom and then his head is open, you know, bleeding to death. You have killed. Killing can never be right, regardless. So morally, it will be wrong, but perhaps legally acceptable. That is why the, 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 those points were made there to show that if you were thinking of the word moral law as the universally applicable law, then it might supersede all the others. But that is contentious because it's an area I work in. And so we don't want to, in trying to give you, uh, you know, presentations, we make claims that can be, con you know, can, can be contested. Perhaps we are talking ethics, the ethical law. That one transcends all this. But moral sometimes have local connotation, like a specific cultural group or a specific religious perspective or a state, someone to do Sharia, what have you. So that's already in contest contestation. But if we were to think of moral law as the universally applicable law of what is right and wrong, because we are all human beings, regardless of the local colors that we have, then we can talk the way we are talking now, okay? The legal need not necessarily be the moral. Something can be legal, that's law accepted, like Adolf Hitler, then Germany would want it to be legal that you do not protect a, a, a Semite then, a Jew then. So you're giving them a way to be killed or whatever it was, was rather legal. If you kept them hidden there, you are in trouble. That was the law, but the law was wrong. America had laws then, eh? Martin Luther King's America, that would not allow blacks to vote. That would not allow blacks and whites to share the same church. Even the Holy Spirit couldn't descend when the blacks were there, but the blacks could come and clean it then, then, then. It has changed now. Women couldn't vote, the franchise and all that. Okay, so they were the law then, but the law was not right. That's why it has changed. So the legal need not necessarily be what the moral. I could ask you questions on that. The cultural norm may change. Maybe we're doing human sacrifice then, so that we get good harvest. After a while, we realize that no, perhaps it wasn't that. When knowledge increases, or we get alternative ways of doing the same thing. The norms will change culturally, it means that cultural norms may not necessarily be moral. So morality then, as presented here, would transcend local coloration, okay? Should be able to have examples to ground the point. Now, back to our main line discussion, moral norm laws then to our what, uh, prescriptive and therefore normative. Quite a number of examples there for you that I don't need to go through. Okay, then a uh, colleague gives you some examples of quotes just for you to reflect on and some conceptions of law and how you should understand them. And these ones are just generic. The, you know, you should just reflect on how people have thought of the word law, morality, these general quotes, what have you. Now, logical laws, remember they are also normative. I show you how you should reason. 
You can't say if you study, then you pass. You have studied yet. You don't want the person. To, you don't want to say the person will pass. What are you saying? There? The logic of it: if A happens, then B will follow. Then you tell us that A has happened. Then it means B must follow. By the logic of it, perhaps not actually there, but the pattern of thought: if this happens, then this will follow. This has happened. It suggests then that this must follow. That's the reasoning part. I wasn't there when it happened. However, when I was there and it happened, I didn't talk. We will have problems with the logic of it, okay? You can't think that way. You must think this way, logic. So these rules are also what normative. And then I've given quite a number of examples in mathematics. You see quite a number of them there. Long division is not your two. So you say that me, if I see division, I think it is, I'll take it to be multiplication. No, there's a meaning to it, definitions that you can't have your own. <laughs> it's a closed concept. So square root is not long division and multiplication is not addition. Even number is not a prime number. That is how we use it in mathematics. The discipline or the tool used to help us calculate and engage. Kilograms is not the same as grams. Don't send five grams of rice or if like five kilos of rice and say that when I say five kilos, I mean one gram of rice. How will we engage? So the tools for reasoning, mathematics, logic, some aspects of physics, for two, the tools for engagement are closed and you don't allow for variations, remember from the top there. All these therefore have prescribed ways of using them or understanding them. And then the last one on your screen, divine laws. If you don't pay your tithe, the police in Ghana will not come and arrest you, but perhaps you will get an arrest if you believe in tithing, eh, you get an arrest of a kind. You know, go and pay the tithe. Because how your electricity bill will run, how your gas will finish, and how your tap will leak water for you to pay electricity, you yourself, you will go and pay that 10% and have your peace if you believe it. Okay, so those ones are on the screen. So prescriptive Sharia law is there. You still one, you cut off your hand. You still another, we cut off the other one. You still, they will cut to you yourself. You decide that uh, you don't have a hand cut to steal. <laughs> that's the norm for certain divine laws. Another one will think of 10 commandments. Some will say we are not under the law, but we are under grace. Well, the law of grace is even stricter than the law of the 10 commandments. People don't know. That one doesn't have a barrier. You can be asked to give all and go home empty because someone needs it. They slap you on the left cheek. The law of grace says, turn the other one. Let them slap that one on top. It's not vindictive. It doesn't pay back. It's so painful. It forgives 70 times, 70 times. People say we're under grace, not under law, only when they want to benefit. That one calls on us to be extra extremely sheepish. We are sheep. And so people think that it's the Ten Commandments and the Sharia law that is too strict and regulatory, regulatory and what have you. Well, if you are uh, under grace to welcome, it's a bigger more you know demanding law which is silent the law is written on your heart so no one even helps you remember you are supposed to know so that something that is right for the other person may not be right for you because of the special assignment in your life and that is why you will need the holy spirit to help you even under grace divine law that was the end of the session any question I have to share this because I think you've gotten so much from me. Perhaps I think that others would have. Very good. I see a club there. I'm enjoying that. Is it clear now? Thank you, clear now. Let's take your questions if you still have any. Two floors first, Nana Kujo. I'll take only two so that people can go. I don't know if, if it was this group that told me that it's time. Now I almost chewed the person up. <laughs> was it this group? Two floors, go ahead. I nearly swallowed the guy up. <laughs> Go ahead, my lady. But I'm, pretty Let's you. I'm sorry, oh. Teofilia. Today to have done that again. Forgive me. Teofilia, go ahead. Madam, please, are all lexical definitions of words empirical? I won't be able to say that. It depends on the kind of definition that has been put into the lexical. So you have to see that definition itself to tell whether it is describing or prescribing. You see that? Okay. Uh -huh. Thank so you. I can't really set like that. Yeah. And I could okay. do like that because you.
Um, but I wanted to ask, but it seems my question has been already answered when you give it. Excellent. Thank but you. I guess I just want to confirm something. Um, Go ahead. About the normative and the empirical. Yes. From what I have learned today, I just wanted to confirm if something that always happens doesn't mean it happen most of That is empirical. Oh, something that always happens like that, what? Um, I just I wanted to ask if, um, let's say, from the doctor's experience that you give, for yes, example, yes, he said he has um experience about how exactly. So tomorrow, happen. so you should, in other words, he's, he's applying what he knows already. That so it's likely, uh, you to you that if he said it's likely that you can also have that uh, effect. Therefore, do something about it. It's making room for the possibility that. This time it won't happen this that way. She, that is safe. That is how you should speak. The degree of likelihood is what you should use. We will engage that in unit seven. I've said you have to speak and tell the person the way you are drinking. I have seen people in, in my practice, I've seen people who drink this way, and when we check their lungs, the lung is not good at all. What you are doing, you can have that. You can. Doesn't mean you have it. With certainty, because some people can drink. I tell you, the, the special grace of God on their life. When you check their lungs, still fresh. Someone went to drink only one. Did it? What? His bad. Someone who has that is for many years. So, because it is observation based, don't speak about it as if you have proven it. We we'll engage it more. It's not a proof. Proof happens in deduction when you are dealing with just patterns. That's what you can prove. If this, then that. This has happened, therefore this. And then it's variables. It's not necessarily speaking to any content. Okay, that's what we are prompting. So the doctor is able to make an informed prediction. The, the meteorologist is able, you tell me that oh, the meteorologist, what he's saying, it may be false. So you won't take an umbrella and see. What, what if what they say happens? And it does. We are living in a world we didn't create. So the scientists investigate, find some patterns and tells you wear nose masks. If it turns out later that with, even without the nose masks, we can survive, then we are okay. They say do ingestion. You say you won't do. Me, I didn't do some you know, confession. I didn't do because I protected myself, I think. But suppose you say you won't do. Then it catches you and you die. Will you resort to come and tell God that as uh, well, you will change it later? So it is very important to listen and engage the empirical studies. What we are advising to is not to present it as dogma because empirical study is not presenting dogma. It's not the word of God, which is always true without doubt. It is not a customary law that we have made for ourselves. It's not mathematical law. That, that is how we want to calculate. Empirical laws are only discoveries we are making and the discoveries may change. So you present it as such to the person, the research available to us now, we can't do anything about this condition of yours. If you want to explore other alternatives, that is a scientist language because he or she is still researching. Not the one who says, I've declared you are you, there's nothing that can happen to you except to die. Why? What do you, why do you say so? You say because you have done all your life of research. People who get into this, they die. But this one can be an exception to help your own research and improve it. Okay, so that is the point with that. I hope that helps. Then I'll take. One last one, I think. Uh, okay, so let me take Kumsen Abna. Sir, please, was it okay? I want to be sure if you were. Before I take yes. Kumsen Abna. Yes, thank you very much. Please. Now, Kumsen, you have to be the very last one. If someone has spoken, Manuel Alute has spoken, Jimama has spoken. So let me just take Abna Kumsen. And then if you still have questions, you can send them to me. I'll take them to tutorial. Go ahead, Abna. Then we should remind you of some questions. And oh no no that, uh, yes 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 that's important i just wanted to show you just to tease you a little <laughs> let me see if i just for you to look at them so i'm coming i'll i have it on my desktop i'll just project that okay. the questions that people answered different people answered different questions they were part of the pool oh dear where is it okay i found it that can take just a minute or so i can end the recording and project that for the subject the proper content we are done i pray that you will continue to engage every content. Almost done. Let me end the recording. Uh -huh. Yeah, done.